our youth is acting very ignorant and they're not caring about their parents, their grandparents, their neighbors. I don't know who could talk to the youth more. My people in the Bronx, they still hanging out in front of the building. They still passing the blunt. This young generation feel like they can't die from this and they don't care who dies from this. We got to find a way to get in these young kids face. Like, I mean, it can't be sugarcoated. It can't be nothing. Our young influences, whoever the youth is really listening to, they got to step up and they got to tell these people, you are killing us. Two weeks ago was spring break. They was all out here partying in spring break. They went back home and they gave it to their parents and all that. Now, two weeks later, people dying. What's the joke? Black people couldn't catch it. Now, black people and Latinos are dying the most. Well, we're going to push those people right into a system that locks them in cages like animals and allows this virus to spread within the prison system to the guards and then out. So I would encourage us, government officials, we have nonviolent drug offenders that should be out where people are waiting that can't get out because of cash bonds. Those people need to get out so that they can self-isolate. So my fear is that the pandemic is going to further criminalize us, and I'm hoping that does not happen. Um, I know a lot of times as entertainers and celebrities, we get on television and we give advice because we've been given that. But a lot of what I'm saying is coming directly from the brothers who are locked away. They're afraid. They're in a panic. And all my Christians out there, I just want to remind you, like Grandmama said, the last person that Jesus saved on that cross was a thief. It was someone who was condemned to die someone who was a prisoner. So in this time of panic, let's not forget empathy and let's not forget those that are locked away because they are as important as the people that are being rushed to the hospitals. One thing that we've done for each other is exemplify what it really means to be a support network, which again goes back to the fact that this time exemplifies no action is too small. That call to your friend to check in to see how they're doing, that call to say, okay, I'm making an essential grocery run. Is there anything that you need? Those do save lives. And uh, a lot of it has been, how can we continue to remain um, in support and in communication and of service to one another because all of our needs are inevitably different. And I think as much as this has been referred to as the great equalizer, we have to acknowledge the difference in everyone's position and try our best to respect it. And if we have the opportunity to and the resources to find ways to bridge the gaps of inequity that I think all of the systemic inequity has been very prevalent uh, right now. By example, by staying in, but also encourage people to you know that this is a time of exploration of inner space you know what i'm saying this is a time to where you, know, you really can discover your passion and when you stay in and people can look at it as like oh that's boring or whatever whatever but i'm but when you stay in this is giving us a time that we've never been able to experience obviously it's a time of tragedy you know but throughout time we've always made uh lemonade out of lemons you know what i'm saying this is a time of self-discovery a time to really heal and a time to look within, you know what I'm saying? So my, you know, to other artists, I just feel like to the platform that we have, I definitely put out like a list of books that I was reading. I put out, you know, I've been painting, I've been doing things. Obviously I've been also working on music cause the music is in my house, but I just been staying like self-contained and, you know, preaching that and, and letting them know that there well. are other factors and other things that we can do right now. New York 14 is the most heavily impacted district in the country. This is disproportionately having an enormous impact on the black community and black and brown communities overall. Rikers Island is also in my district. When I first started sounding the alarm on this, people said, you know, a virus can't be racist. Well, no, a, biologically a virus can't be racist, but our policies can be racist. We have, there's a, a history of racist uh, policies. And just like we saw with Katrina, just like we saw with Hurricane Maria, when a natural disaster comes in or when a virus or a pandemic comes into a community that's already been weakened and ravaged by policies like mass incarceration, redlining, the war on drugs, police violence, etc., this really creates an added issue. We have issues like environmental racism, where black and brown communities are treated as a dumping yard.